trees here. Okay. We need, oh, we need some grass here. Maybe some, some big rocks here on the shore. A little sand going on here. Okay, and we need, oh, we need some mountains up here. Okay. I don't want to get too complex because I'm going to try and... Ah, I'm already way too complex. What am I doing? Ah, inspiration can cause you a lot of trouble. Okay, sort of, sort of. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something. Oh, I am ridiculous. This is hurting. Okay, let me see here. Now, this shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> now, what in the world was I doing with these squiggles? This is not good. <laughs> okay, whatever. Squiggle, squiggle. All right, now, now I'm getting easier. Okay, something like that. Okay. You left out a tree. I left out a whole tree. <laughs> oh, God. They're going to have to pay me more. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, something like this. Yeah, you know, we do the okay, something like that. All right, you get the idea. So you've got this, this idea in our brain, because we see it in nature all the time, of something being reflected, as in a pool, or maybe this is a lake. I would like to go there about now. <laughs> Anybody got spring break on the brain? <laughs> summer, no, summer, yeah. I want summer. Okay, so we've got this pattern over here, and it's reflected, and when you do that, if this is, you know, so ever many inches high here on the board, its reflection will be the same amount down. Maybe I should do it this way, though. Zoop down. However high this line is above the point of the axis, it needs to be the same distance down below here if it's a true reflection. This mirror image is an inversion of what's up above. And this is the axis of inversion. That's where we pin it down, we flip it, we flip it over. That's inversion visually. If we had a grand staff here, let's make a quick one. We could use middle C as our inversion, our axis of inversion. The basic one. And let's make a little motive here. Okay, and let's invert it over here. So, um, when we take this pattern, we want to make sure that whatever, however high this G is above middle C, that when we reflect it, we go down by that same distance. So that's 7 up. Let's go 7 down. That gives to F. In other words, that was 7, so this needs to be minus 7. See what inversion is doing? Just like this picture, I have an axis across which I flip everything. This is an octave. So that'll end up being down here. Uh, that's 12. So I'm going to go minus 12 there. And this will be here. Now, all right, so what's the net effect? When you transpose something, the intervals the interval pattern is just spun around, but it, it remains identical to what it was before. I might move it, but I'll have the same intervals. Do I have the same intervals here? Once I take this pattern and I invert it, does the inversion match the original? What's changed? Think about it like this. Here are the intervals inside this motive. I went up five and then down a semitone. What happens now in the inversion of that? Good. Same size, but opposite direction. 
when you invert, everything is flipped over. It's upside down. If an interval went up, now it goes down. If it, if it originally goes down, it'll go up in the inversion of it. So it, it reverses the interval direction. Let's see what that looks like on a clock face. Um, how about, let's pick something that crosses this divide. You had one over there that would do. Well, I'll make a new one. Okay, let's say we're, let's say we've got those notes. And we want to invert it. This is, that's our axis of inversion. We're going to flip everything across it. And if I do that, this will become, over here, 1. 11 becomes 1. 3 will get flipped over here. Oh, are you starting to see a pattern here? Looks <laughs> <laughs> like a, maybe a, you see a basketball in there? <laughs> or a, if, we did, if we're looking at a baseball could it look so? If we turned it right, we might be able to see something like that. But yeah, it's kind of like a basketball, isn't it? If we keep mapping out what becomes what. As you flip things across here, you're going to get all these, these paths. And what happens to the C? It just stays put, because it's on the axis. Like, does this bit of sand here, if you look closely, you'll see a piece of sand on the shore. Does it, does it move? No. It's, it's there on the axis, so you don't see any reflection of it. Whatever's right there just stays put. And by the way, the F sharp would stay put too, wouldn't it? So it would just go right back on itself. It spins, but it doesn't go anywhere. You know, it stays put. Okay, so our new set, um, that's not a circle there. We have this note, this note, and this note. You see one and three on here. But to read off 1, 3, we're going to have to go this way, 1, 3. If this is up to go clockwise, then now we're going to go counterclockwise down to get the same interval pattern. It takes whatever intervals were there, uses them again, but turns them all upside down. The 1, three pattern happens here, but we have to go minus one, minus three to get through this one. See that? Plus one, plus three, this way. Minus that way in the inversion of it. This one, by the way, will look interesting. Let's just stick that up too so we can see what this looks like when, when we transpose, when we uh, invert it. Okay, so we've got um, we've got C, we've got seven G, and we've got B right there. That one will work just fine. C, that's our axis. The C stays put, so it's still there. This goes flipping over, and this goes flipping over to here. So there's our inversion. Whatever's on this side ends up on that. If I made it super, if I made it really neat and wasn't trying to show what happens to things that are on the axis and things that are on opposite sides, what they all do, I could just put a pattern over on this side and see what it does. And you'd be able to see the symmetry even more, I suppose. Because whatever's on one side will end up on the other. Does that make it even clearer? You're just taking this stuff and you're flipping it over. Okay, so transposition spins things around the clock face. Inversion does what? It flips them on the clock face. Yeah. There's gymnastics going around on the board today. <laughs> Flipping and spinning. It's very active here. Labels are not active. You say, oh, this isn't a set class. You're just categorizing it, right? You're not saying what it does or how it behaves. 
you're just saying this is the content. These intervals, so it's this set class. Now we're changing our whole focus and we're saying not what is it, but how do we get from it to something else. Okay, so now, now that we've got kind of a picture of this thing, I'd like to try it out and see how it works. First of all, I want to be able to do inversion, which means I'm going to give you a set and you try inverting it. Okay? Now, inversion involves two things. It involves flipping it. And then it involves spinning it sometimes to put it where we want it. This choice of an axis is arbitrary. It's just by convention. We could put that axis here or here. Or we could flip, right? That would work too. So it's just by convention that we pick middle C and F sharp as our axis. And because that is completely arbitrary, we have to have a way of, of actually getting the notes that we want. Maybe we're trying to write this motive or this chord not with these notes, but we want to, so we want the inversion, but not with these particular notes. We have to have the freedom of spinning now as well. So when we invert, when we do inversion, it's actually a compound transformation. In other words, there are a couple steps to this thing. You'll do T and I, which means do this first, and do this second. You have to do them both. You invert first, and then you spin it around by transposing to use whatever notes you want. So it's all well and good to be able to flip it over, but you know, if I'm writing a piece, maybe I don't want it right there. Maybe I want to start on another note. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, that's inversion. I is done. Now, if I want this to start on some other note, I'll have to move it. Maybe I want it to start on A. Then, to create this, if I want those notes, A, E, and F, then I'm going to have to transpose it. I need T4. I need to move everything up by 4. That would be, these notes here would be T, 4, I. I'll do two things at once. Let me show you how that works then on your worksheet. So pull out your worksheet, and I've given you a set, and then the transformation T1I next to it. We're going to first write down the, the pitch classes using the clock face numbers, pitch class numbers, for integer notation. In the next column, we're going to invert it, and then in the last column, we'll transpose it by the interval that it tells us, in this case, 1. All right, so let's write that on the board. Okay, we want to do T, 1I. List the set for me. A, B flat, C, D. Okay, our first step is just to turn this this set into numbers. So I'll do that real fast because that's easy to do. Okay, so this is pitch classes, PCs here in this column. Then in the next, we're going to invert. So this is the inversion. Let's do that. If we invert this around C, what happens? What does what does zero become when you invert? Zero becomes. No. What is it? What happens? It's on the axis, so it maps to. Zero. To itself, it just spins. It goes nowhere. So zero becomes zero. What does one become? E. Yes. Eleven. You flip it over. What does two become? Two. Yes. Two becomes ten. Three, what's it do? Three. Or nine. Nine. Here, four becomes eight. Eight. Do you see what's going on here? It's just counting down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they will always sum, if you want to think about it this way. These two inversionally related pitch classes will always sum to... What? Twelve. Twelve. I'm running out of room here, but 
the nice thing is that it starts to repeat itself. Five in verse to seven, five in verse... So really, I've written all that I need to know right here. The rest is just repeating that same pattern. So when you invert a note, the original note in its inversion, when expressed as pitch class numbers, always sums to 12. Or zero, right? 12 is zero. <laughs> On a clock face, 12 is zero. You've gone, yeah, you, you, you're always summing to 12. Now, another way to think about this is that if you have a positive distance over here, when you invert it, you make it the same distance in the other direction. Remember this idea? Same distance here becomes same distance there. On a clock face, it looks like this. Follow me here, watch this. I'm taking this note and making sure that its inversion is the same distance away from that axis, just in the opposite direction. You see the pattern? It's the same as this. Same as this. Seven becomes minus seven. So seven, which is this, um, becomes that over there. You've got the same distance. I have to bring, bring a big arrow over here. One more, let's do this one. If this is, one, two, then when you invert it, it will become minus two. Two semitones down from there. But now notice, one becomes 11, two becomes 10, yeah. right? So either way you think about it, it's, it, it is that, that pattern of making sure that Whatever distance it was from the axis is that distance again, but just in the opposite direction. So minus 2. To go minus 2 is to go plus 10. Just like we had it over here a minute ago, but you could go up 4, but you could also go, or we said 8. Uh, one of these was 8 and 4. You, you get the same thing. If you go minus 4, it's the same as going 8. Um, okay. Questions on that? That makes sense. Okay, good. So th if this is what happens when you invert, let's do it over here. Nine becomes three, three because nine and three make twelve. Ten becomes two. Zero stays put. Two becomes ten. We have just inverted this set. Good so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we need to we need to transpose. I'll just write transpose and erase. To there. Okay, so if I'm going to transpose this, I need to transpose, I've done this. We do that first, now we're on to T1. I'm going to take this the inversion and move everything up one. Because T1 means spin it, move it, one click around the clock face. Three becomes four, two becomes three, zero, one, and ten becomes eleven, and I am done. It's that easy. Invert first, transpose second. So the original is A, B flat, C and D. Flipping it upside down in that first step, and in the end, I have four, three, one, eleven. Hear the half step at the top now, whereas before it was at the bottom. I've just taken the pattern and I've inverted it. It was here, half step at the bottom. I flip it over now, the half steps at the top. Same intervals, but they've been flipped with respect to one another, and we've made sure to put it at a particular transposition so we get the notes we want. All right, try the next couple yourself.